Okay, no, we're not back too late. That was great, Amar. And Thanks. matter of fact, those last questions, uh, <clears throat> as I was just saying with Carl, is a uh, good segue into Carl's IP Roadshow uh, introduction. It's only going to be a short 10 minute intro to the IP Roadshow, which is across the way in the club room. You go through the um, hotel entrance and then down the hallway, and it's kind of the room that overlooks the, uh, the bay. So uh, Carl will cover that. and. Uh, He'll tell you that his the purpose of uh, the IP Roadshow, of course, is for um, for training ultimately. So it's uh, I guess this is it. Oh shoot. Uh oh. Yep, it's failed. This so this so happens. All right, let me escape and try it again. Or did I not? All right. All right, but we need to go back to it. Should take, right? Yeah, but I clicked it and it didn't take. It doesn't have the file. Ooh. Did not. All right, all right, sorry. Hang on. All right. Engineers with technical issues. <laughs> You'd start without the um, slides. Yeah, if you want to speak for a second, I'll pull yeah, your slide yeah. back. Okay. Hi, I'm uh, Carl Paulson from Diversified, and uh, the last question was the perfect introduction to my session, uh, which is really an introduction to what we're doing across the hall, as, uh, as Rick said. Um, the whole impetus behind this, what we call the OIP Roadshow, is exactly education and training. Um, ready? Yep. Okay. So um, we started out on this project about a year and a couple months ago. It was an irony that ourself and Tektronix collided together at their booth at NAB and said, "How?" I asked the question of Tektronix, how do they train their people? And they sort of asked the same question of us. And we said, well, why don't we just put a partnership together and figure out how to do this for the industry? So uh, this is really where we're headed a little bit about. This is a project that we started a year before that conversation I had. In earnest, this is the, the new CNN headquarters in New York. This is the, what they call the terminal gear room. And you will notice there's no broadcast cable trays in this system anymore. There's a ton of fiber trays. This is your new patch panel. It's not really a patch panel. It's just a cross connect. There are 3,200 fibers in this. There are four of them on each side of two TGRs. So you do the math. That's uh, 20 to 30 or 40,000 fibers just in this area that cross connects to the central core switch that Amir was talking about, and t to the rest of the floors, a total of five floors and one, one below that as a se secondary um, throughout the building. And our task was not only to train our engineering people on what all this new 2110 technology is going to be about, but as a contract to train CNN on how to do this as well. So this was the impetus behind uh, what, we, what we've put together. And what we brought to the uh, Bits by the Bay conference is that actual training kit and, uh, and segments from the training program. There's a large, uh, large screen on one side that shows, uh, shows some sample slides of what we use in the curriculum. It's a two-day curriculum. It is hopefully that you have some networking background in the Cisco training that they've coming up. We were exposed to that a couple weeks ago um, in, at the VSF meetings in San Jose. Uh, it's going to be a good training program. It, it is really refined towards media. So we took that and started to say, let's build uh, an explanation of what ST2110 and 2022 is, how do you design it into systems, and what will be, in essence, the best practices. We took that around the country. We've trained over 100 engineers in our company and some uh, customers of ours, ours as well. And um, now we're moving it into another phase where we've added some more equipment based upon software-defined networking, SDNO, and real broadcast gear, which you'll see over there, multi-viewers and things like that. Um, you can meet any of our people, primarily myself or Phil Burnell in the audience, Phil. Um, he's the mastermind behind the whole kit. He's the guy that gets responsible for, for wiring and so forth. And then John Bradford from Tektronix and Cassidy Phillips from um, Imagine doing, uh, representing his equipment and so forth in there. It goes through the nuts and bolts. The pra training program really tells about, at the time, 2110, 20, and 30, and it supplements. And now we've added, of course, 40. 31, 21, and 22 um, as we're building and so forth. Uh, it, the SEMPTI Standards Group, which was uh, the, the document author was John Mayotte that you saw earlier today. 
uh, consists of about 70 regular participants that happen have any weekly meetings. We've had them for, well, now it's probably closer to 30 months, but it started when this slide was first put together. It was 18 months of work to get the standards, the basic standards, which were released at IBC last year officially. There's a, a little bit about the roadmap for each of the various areas, the ancillary data, the video, the audio, and so forth, and, and the various standards and representations that you need to be familiar with. They're explained over there in the uh, showcase. Uh, we talk about IEEE 1588, the precision time protocol, which is not just specific to broadcast systems itself. It's actually what times things like cell towers and cell hand handoff when you move from one cell to another. Uh, also, the, the broadcast implementations, which are r sort of scaled or specific uh, implementations of 1588. We talk a little bit about, and we'll show what leaf and spine architecture, which you just saw quite a bit about uh, previously. And we kind of give some demonstrations of how we got to this point. And so what I wanted to share with you is, is what the industry started doing quite a while ago, actually, probably a couple of years ago now. And these are these interop sessions that were mentioned a couple of times. This is actually the, the setup, the pre-stage for IBC uh, 2017. At this point, we had 51 companies in this and two other rooms. This is the Fox Network uh, Center in Houston. They have their own lab and a facility. You can see there's probably 20 or 25 racks total. Uh, the multi-viewers are all there. The imaging is all there. All the vendors come and bring their equipment in. It is qualified and tested make sure it meets the, all the compliance points for uh, 2110 and whatever uh, dash section it's are being applied to. And then we start to connect them together and show that they really do work together in pods and so forth. It's five days worth of work. There's two sessions of them. One's an interop testing session to qualify the equipment, and then there's a pre-stage that's happened before. So this is what goes on in the background to make this standard work and why it's been so successful in a very quick time. This is the NAB 2017 uh, setup. We had, 30, at that time, 31 participating companies, and it was really the ST2110 NISO4 in its draft standard. It hadn't even been published yet, but we brought all that equipment, put it together in 12 racks, showed it on the monitors you can see up above there. Um, a lot of people, a lot of effort to put this together and make it very successful, and it really was successful, so we took it to IBC. Uh, this is one part of IBC where we did live productions. The entire IP system was in 2110 and ISO 4 at that time. ISO 5 was under development, but it was being demonstrated for the first time, and ISO 6 was still a thought and process at, at that point in time. So you can see that's not very long ago. It's not even a year ago from last September that we have gotten to this point, and this has moved very, very uh, rapidly and successfully. Um, this was done in last year at the uh, SEMTI conference in, um, in Hollywood in October. At that point, there were about 20 vendors that brought their equipment in eight racks a year, basically the same thing as we have shown to the public. So if you've been to any of these, you probably get a little bit of exposure to it. If you can't, we've got a very, con or haven't been, we've got a very convinced, condensed version of it uh, for training purposes, you'll see. And this is what the kit looks like. It consists of a Tektronix Prism, uh, video clarity, IP only player. It's a 2110 audio and video player. Uh, puts out four streams at the same time. We have a primary and a secondary master uh, sync generator and uh, IP generator. That is the PTP mas grand masters for the system. We now have added, imagine routing, uh, a router panel, a new 7280 switch that is a, a 110, uh, 40, 25, 50, 100, and ultimately 400 gig switch, um, and specifically set up for the media uh, applications. Uh, an EPIC multi-viewer, which is this one here, and then the uh, Selenium network processor. So we do have a little bit on top of the shelf in the, uh, the demo. We have a four-channel Nexio server, which is an SDI base, so we can show you how we bridge between SDI and IP seamlessly. And then um, there is the orchestration system, or the SDN, uh, Software Defined Network Orchestrator, which is the, the brains behind all of this that does all the routing and management and flow management and flow awareness and so forth. So all the components like ISO4 and those capabilities are in that area. That is, in this case, both the network controller and the broadcast controller. And then finally, we brought two pieces of equipment at the bottom, which are analyzers from PacketStorm, 
Um, relatively new added, we, we actually used that last week to diagnose some problems and had some software corrections in some of the equipment, because a lot of this is very, very new. It's cutting edge or just barely released type product, but it all now interoperates together. Um, the, these are very f deep boxes for doing design development or for troubleshooting, and they're actually the same units that qualified all of the other devices that you saw in the pictures for the interop and the testing. So uh, this is the layout of what we've got. You can see that again over there. Um, um, Multi-viewers and prism um, the prism signal monitors feed the large monitors there. The server playouts are here. Systems uh, references are at the top. And then the analyzation analyzer equipment's up there on the right-hand side. So you can kind of see the types of signals that we're using. We're using both copper and fiber. Um, this is a generalization of how the uh, the Selenio network processor interfaces both SDI signals, so this is your gateway as well. So we picked one product that had all the capabilities of doing both SDI to IP and IP to IP conversions and, and translations. It's connected by a pair of remain and redundant 100 gig um, QSFP28 cabling over to the uh, um, Arista switch, everything in the system runs through this switch, and you can kind of get the idea where the flows and the data rates and so forth are there. And this is a, a, an eye chart, I'm sure, but that kind of gives you a graphic picture of how things are connected. And that's it. So you can go over and you can actually see it. Let me tell you about the way this works. We're going to have it open, staffed with uh, during breaks. We can probably get easily 25 or t people or so into the room comfortably, a lot of room in a lot of space in the room, but to see it, probably 20 or 25 people. If you would like to make private appointments to come see it during the rest of the sessions, there's a sign-up sheet on the, on the table in there. Just let us know. Pick, pick somebody you want to um, you know, have come and talk to, and we'll go through any of the parts in detail. So that's it. Go to the, uh, we'll take questions over there. Yes, uh, we're going to have a uh, Q&A session uh, in addition to what you're doing at uh, 3.20 to 3.50 this afternoon. We're going to have a, a Q&A session with all the presenters who are still here on this super session. Um, so we're about to take a break, uh, a morning break that it will be half an hour long. We'll be back um, at 11.30, sponsored generously by CEI. Thank you, CEI. And uh, when we come back, we've got uh, Henry Goodman uh, presenting on AES 67 as it pertains to uh, SVIP and uh, Carl Kuhn on his uh, presentation on uh, PTP, as you've heard, PTP implementation. All right. Hey, Peter, I'm lost getting back to the, the home slide. I've got lost getting back to the home slide. Well, so you have to get out of this one. Because right, hit escape, but I didn't want to have to. Well, then you have to come back to look at Wednesday program, and it'll be the main menu, because I think we unloaded it. Ah, uh, okay. And I'll just do a quick check to make sure all the rest of these work. Okay. I was just going to put the uh, slides up for the... Um, Let me just do a quick check to make sure the rest of the slides work, so if I go... To